right, everybody, welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Baumeister. And I'm Ross Miriam. And we got Dan, the man with a plan, in the booth. Say what's up, Dan. What's up, Dan? Dan will be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and zyburns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games. He will get his favorite questions and comments sent over to us. Today we are continuing, or starting, I should say, uh, a little dive into historic now with Kaladesh remastered coming out next Wednesday I believe the 11th yeah the 11th yeah that is yeah next Wednesday yep going to be uh, going to be really cool nice spice up to uh to historic just because this it's just chock full of good cards you know absolutely powerful cards to an already really powerful format and uh like we've been saying earlier it's been really fun exploring what kind of new ways you can freshen up these these cards that were so dominant, you know? Uh, and one of the cards I immediately wanted to play with, and we're actually gonna see it in my next two decks because it was one of my favorites, is Chandra Torch of Defiance. Probably my favorite four drop planeswalker ever. And yes, I'm looking at you, Jace, you know. I I prefer me a good Chandra. I, I just love it. That is the template of planeswalkers that they seem to be going away from now because it's just too good. Tick up, draw a card in some way, down tick, kill something, ultimate win. Yeah. You know? And, and uh and the added ability to ramp with Chandra was very relevant. Yeah, yeah, but, that's you know, right. Yeah. You often thought that when it two players started on serving the conduit, you'd want to go like turn three Chandra minus on your servant yeah. and uh, you know not use a full card but it was generally better to plus and use a harness lightning or some other removal spell on yep. it so that they couldn't you know easily deal with your Chandra back usually with a Chandra of their own because it could hit planeswalkers at the time yep yeah uh you know so maybe that would change but that ability to go plus cast a red removal spell uh was super powerful back oh, in the yeah. day and should be really helpful in your deck right now you're giving me flashbacks to like gp denver that time where it's just like i played against so much mono red from Teamer Energy side, and like Teamer Energy wasn't like exploding big at that time. After that tournament, it was pretty large, yeah. but man, was that fun to do against the mono red decks. It's just tick up, kill something, and now you have a Chandra at five. You're like, good luck, you know? So, no, it was, uh, you know. I was always so scared when they plus to make mana. Yeah. When they plus it to exile the top card, you know, they could just hit a land. You would take two. Yeah. You know, maybe they hit a bad spell that doesn't even really matter. But when yeah. they're plusing to make mana, you know that they're using every bit of mana that they have and they're doing something really good. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to be playing a Rakdos mid range, a deck that was so good around Pro Tour Dominaria. It was like Dominaria was that and Blue White Control were like the only two decks you could really play. And variations on the red deck. You know, the red ended up being like six out of eight in the top eight or something. Uh, just something ridiculous. But this was the more slowed down version. You get to play. Now we get upgrades like Blood Chief's Thirst. You get, you know, um, is it Croxa? And we get, our mana base gets better. You get Blood Crypt. You know, that's pretty huge. So a lot of just fundamental upgrades to this deck that I think will make it uh, quite strong. Yeah, I love yeah. the idea of having Heart of Kieran in play, casting a Croxa, and crewing the Heart of Kieran with the Croxa trigger on the stack. Oh, yeah. That sounds nice. <laughs> uh, as I said before the break, I'm going to be playing Golgari Constrictor, a okay. very aggressive version of the build. I've got 12 one-drops, Llanowar Elves. We're topping out at Vivian Arcbow Ranger and Verderous Gearhulk. Okay. I'm really trying to, you know, press the advantage quickly, but you have some staying power with things like Swarm Shambler, with Grackma, and then with Vivian, so you're going to okay. keep bodies on the battlefield, and then Vivian helps pump them. Yeah. Uh, and then a good disruption with Thoughtseize and Blood Feast Thirst and Murderous Rider, which is, you know, giving you extra bodies on top of your removal spell. Always nice when you're able to pump those bodies. Sounds awesome. Yeah, Grackma is a card I'm uh, quite terrified uh, from. We don't have an insane amount of Exile-style effects, so it should be, uh, should be quite interesting. All right, so I won, so you get to choose. I am on the play, and yep. my hand looks pretty solid. Yeah, my hand's pretty good, too. I'll keep. Okay, I will lead on Pelt Collector. Pelt Collector. Gotta love it. All right. Um, now the question is, do I want to let that start to get out of hand or try to just do something about it now? Um... Hmm. I think I would rather get Bomat going. Here, I'll go to 19. Here you go. I'll offer that trade. I will play a Swamp and a Scavenger Goose. Get a okay. counter on the Pell Collector and attack for two. Alrighty, 18. Here, pass the turn. Pell Collector or Scavenging is going to be a nice one here as well. Yeah, just another card that is very good on its own. You know, yep. multi-format staple that is just good with Winding Constrictor. Yep, I like it. Okay, I'm going to start with 
thirsting the scavenging ooze, playing another Bowmy and getting in there. That's pretty scary. Yeah, so not it's bad. 17. Your go. Are you sure this isn't the mono red aggro deck? Yeah, from right. Last match? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like it, I must say. I am going to thought seize you. Okay. I got these. Uh, so don't really want to take the scrap heap scrounger. Yep. So I think I just take Glorybringer, and notoriously yep. excellent card against Constrictor. That's exactly what I was going to say. I played Constrictor, and then Teamer Energy became the thing, and I could not play Constrictor any longer. Yeah. So um, you got a 15? 15. 15 yep. I'm going to go to 13 for an Overgrown Tomb and Thirst the Courier with two cards under it. Okay. Then I'll attack for two. All so right. 13 to 16. Yep. Pass the turn. Oh, and tap. Um, I will attack for one. I go to 12. All right, and we're gonna play our scrounger, and I'll give you the information to just get the land and a play tapped and pass to you. You wait till I have eight mana. This glory bringer's coming back. <laughs> uh, forest swarm shambler. Okay. And now, I think I'm just gonna pass the turn. Okay, kind of control bow mad here a little bit. That makes sense. Yeah, I kind of think I shouldn't have attacked last turn. I yeah, regretted maybe. doing that. Maybe. For sure, Scrounger is getting in there because there is, uh, you know, no real, no real point. I mean, it can block, so th that's an obvious one. Now it's just a question of do I want to throw away bow mat yet? And I don't think so. Um, so mm. we'll start with just an attack here. Go to nine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> nine to 16. Now, I think I want to just be a little bit aggressive here. So I'm actually going to add a deems for just bow mat and pass to you. That is punishing, <laughs> but still good. Okay. Yeah, Walking Ballista is the card I am very afraid of, and I'm so lucky that it's not, uh, yeah. that's not here. I, if I drew an untapped Black Source, I wanted to keep the Agadim, so I played Forest last turn, yeah. but I drew one of my two Verderous Gear Hulks. Ooh. So I will go to six Okay. for the Agadim, play Gear Hulk. Now, this is going to get a counter because I'm going to have the Pelt Collector trigger resolve first. Yep. Uh, but the Verderous Gear Hulk, how do I want to distribute? Um, I think I definitely want to have counters on everything by the time we're done. So one counter is going to go on the Gear Hulk, I think. Kay. I also want to create at least another blocker that can deal with Scrounger. So one counter has to go on Pelt Collector. Kay. And then two counters on Swarm Shambler, I think makes sense. Kay. So we'll have a 5-5, five, five, a 4-4, four, four, and a 3-3. Three, three. Makes sense. Uh, looks good to me. Pass. All right, but I'm at six life, so very scary. This ag that Agadine play, trying to get back Does my. Does this ooze. scare you? <laughs> <laughs> Does that draw scare you, Mr. Ross Merriam? Because it should. I am going to Croxa. I will go to three. Um, now I am going to take two. Fourteen. I am going to attack. Trigger. Trigger. And I'm going to, uh, I think I just want to sack both, um, both things on the stack. I mean, I could, I could hold back one bow mat, I guess, but I kind of want them both in the yard because that threatens the escape already. Five, nine, 10, 11, 12. I guess I'm just like dead to a few things here, huh? You'd be. I guess I have to attack with this too. There's no point. Uh, well, it is just throwing it away. Hmm. I kind of want, is it okay if I take this back? Sure. I want to just attack with these two. Because um, in case I get a Crocs under this, I, I would actually yeah. want to do this. I, I think so. that makes a lot of sense. And this um, is still enough cards for Crocs the next turn. So, yeah, yep. I will. And even before blockers, I'm going to sack this. That'd be the correct okay. play because I know you're going to kill it. Um, and then, yeah, damage. I already played a land, so I will pass to you. Okay, I will uh, attack for uh, nine. Hmm. 
Hmm. So attacking for nine will put you to five. Mm, uh, no, I've got to attack with, got to attack with everything. Attack for twelve. I'll take it. Brings you to two. Mm -hmm. Fast turn. Oh, you have the. <laughs> I was just thinking about needing to kill you next turn. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I gotta leave the swarm. You got it. Yep. Attack with the tramplers. Okay, so That's I gonna put gain you five. three. Go to five. Now the question is, do I actually want to block? You can put a counter on this. Um, and this has trample now, I guess. Yeah. Huh? So yeah, that this. doesn't really pay. Um, my hand ended up being my draws were terrible. Um. So the real thing I'm thinking is if I play, so this would have me going to five, huh? So yep. if I play Croxa, you get and the I can block, block this. here, take four. Yeah. Okay. So I think that is still pretty good. Um, so I don't want to chump this time, and I don't want to bring back Scrounger. So yeah. All right. I'll take it. I'll go to five. Yeah, five. Pass. We bring back those. Oh, no, yeah, I don't want to bring that back. Yeah. Croxa. Yeah. Okay, let's go with Castle, bring back Croxa. I will discard a Pelt Collector. Okay, and I will play a Scrounger and pass to you. And Steph, add a counter. Okay, drum roll. No whammies. Pass the turn. Okay. Um... So you have to discard a spell if you have it, probably a creature. Um, so let's play a bow mat. Um, now the question is, can I even attack? Well, I guess you'd have to chump. So you lose one of your block or your attackers anyways, but you could chump with this or even that. It's an interesting spot. Mm hmm. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, this is uh, this is tricky. It is tricky. Bowmont couriers are putting in a lot of work, though. Yeah, they have. Um, so I think I just want to... God, this feels bad, but I think I just want to attack with one Bowmont, get a card. Block of your hold. Uh, yeah, I will discard. And I already and then I will pass to you. I'll add a counter to this. Yeah, of course. Uh I drew a blooming marsh, which is not very good. Okay. And uh, I still don't have good attacks, so I will pass. All right, and Steph, I'm gonna take two. So now we have three all. Three all, draw. That was pretty good. That was also pretty br pretty busted. Some combination of this has gotta be lethal. So I got Pia, Kira, Nora, no, Nalar, and a Croxa. <laughs> well, just the Croxa will do it. I think just the Pia did it as well. Uh, I just make three yeah, creatures yeah. not be able to block, yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Well, sick. This 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 brings back memories and just just felt awesome. Yeah. I miss Bowmat. I miss Scrounger. Good card. And I had one deck building decision that cost me in that game. I decided to try to play Swarm Chambler instead of Stone Coil Serpent as yeah. the last one drop because I wanted more ways to be resilient to spot removal when I have Vivian. I just wanted yep. to keep bodies around. But if that Swarm Chambler was a Stone Coil Serpent, it would have been a 4 4 when I cast it. It would have stopped one attack from a Scrap Heap earlier and would yeah. have just been a big Trampler, a third big Trampler. Yeah. It would have made my attacks a lot 
better. And so. can just like block Croxa and stuff like that and attack yeah. through it. Yeah, no, that would have been pretty huge. Do you want to do the same? You want to do two pre? Sure. We probably got a lot of time. These decks that we made are definitely more, I would say more proactive. You know, I, I am kind of a control deck here, but we are just playing some uh, good old fashioned beat down decks basically. Yeah, so. And Historic's a pretty fast format with things like, yeah. you know, Muxus Goblins and oh, Sacrifice yeah. decks that can really end the game quickly. Like, yeah. you know, you got to be putting pressure on your opponent because they're building towards a really powerful end game. Yeah, and that's the whole thing too. One thing we do want to stress is we are we are putting six new shells out there, new in quotes, because these are decks that have been around for a long time, but you still have to remember that Historic is still going to have Muxus. It's still going to have Sultai mid-range. So just because these decks may be good in the grand scheme of it here, they will have to be adjusted to... Uh, the historic metagame at large, um, you know, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Dan, um, you got a question at all? Yes. Uh, actually, a lot of people in chat are wondering why no fatal push for either of your decks? Yeah. So uh, I I thought thirst, I, we had this argument about my deck as well, just blood chiefs thirst or fatal push. And I think I just wanted the versatility to be able to kill planeswalkers more. Um, I, th I thought it was more important, but I was very considering switching it to Fatal Push or even a 2-2 split, but I went with Thirst to just kind of try it out. Yeah, we it's, it's close between the two, and neither deck really has space to run both, and yeah. it, it, neither deck is good at turning on Revolt. Yeah, no no fetch lands, you know, so, I mean, it's it's not great. So, you yeah. know, the, you're you're comparing the upside of the two cards mm -hmm. a lot, and the upside of Blood Chief Service being able to kill bigger things more reliably and being able to hit Planeswalkers, yep. uh, we viewed as more valuable than the instant speed on Fatal Push. Mm-hmm. But both still great cards, so. Yeah. All right, you are first. Uh, gonna have to mulligan this one with only one land. Okay. Ugh, this is kind of bad as well, but on the draw. Yeah, I think this is a, a close keep. I'll try it. Close keep. Close keep. A little sketch, but... You mean a Cory keep? It was a Cory keep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Pretty standard Cory keep. All it's right. actually a historic Cory keep. Yes, yes, yes. Got to keep that straight, Cory. Get your head in the game. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I believe uh, scoreboard, I am still winning right now. I believe you, it is need that needs to get your head in said game. Well, there's not a lot of space with your head in the game. <laughs> Whoa, are you saying I have a big head? Thank you. Is that a smart joke? No, or is that not. just an Afro joke? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever you want it. Yeah, do. all right. I'm smart. Ross Merriam said it. Quote it. Everyone retweet it. Let's go. Okay, this is a solid six. Okay. Uh, I think I have to put this one back. Yeah. Okay. And I will lead on Forest Land or else. Okay. All right. Not ideal here. Um, I got a castle. Pass to you. Blooming Marsh. Okay. A Grackmaw. Ooh. Pass the turn. Ooh. Uh, that's not good. Um, I got a Thoughtseize. One turn too late. I also have a Thoughtseize. <laughs> <laughs> I think your Scavenging Ooze is a little bit more important than taking one of these cards, but maybe not. If I take your thoughtsies, you get to play that. That seems like a problem to me. I just don't want you to progress your battlefield, so I'm gonna take the creatures. Makes sense. And then I'll pass to you. So you're at 18. Yep. Um, that's pretty cool. I will thoughtsies you. Okay. I got these. I will take the unlicensed disintegration. Okay. So I go to 18. Mm -hmm. Then I will play Orin Reef Ooze. Oh, God. And I think I want to put the counter on it. What a lucky draw. Because then when it attacks, it'll be a 4 4, so the Pia doesn't block it effectively. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, now I'm then regretting I will my, for three. my take. All right, 15. 15. I'm at 18, past the turn. <sighs> That's not ideal. Huh. Well, have myself a nice little curve this game. Yeah, because you're so lucky. So lucky. Um, Wait till I draw the second ordinary foos this turn. <laughs> yeah, please don't. <laughs> All right, I just got a Pia and I'll pass to you. 
I got a Thopter. Okay, not a great draw there, but that's fine. So I'll attack, okay. put a counter on each of these. So uh, I both can't four fours. kill either of them. That's a problem. Um, and they, neither of them trample, right? Correct. Okay. Um, Importantly, this means that they will both grow to five fives the turn bef right before Cory can cast Glory Bringer. I will block. Brings you to 11. Yep. I will play another Llanowar Elves and okay. pass the turn. Could be worse, could be better. Um, and I just need a nice little Verderous Gear Hulk. Yeah, please no. <laughs> Maybe a Vivian. Or <laughs> I will crack We got this. two unknowns here, right? Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to Blood Chief's Thirst with Kicker, that Orin Reef. So that'll put a counter on the Grack Maw. Oh, it does? Yeah, when a creature dies, uh, if that creature that died had a plus and plus one counter, Grack Maw gets a counter. Yeah, it's still better than me killing Grack Maw. Then you just get a yeah. giant card. So, all right, past you. Yeah, that card's a problem. Smash for five. I'll take it. Brings Down to six. six. And I will play a Forest and pass. Okay. Couple weak draws giving Corey a chance to get back into this, but Crack Maw, like you said, is just a problematic card for his deck to deal with. Yeah, and I did not draw what I needed to. Even Glorybringer is not ideal here. Croxa would be good, but a little slow. I'm not going to have the time. So I guess I'll start with this. I'll go to 15. And I'll pass to you. So. Um. I'll make you use a removal spell on the land or else. Mm -hmm. Yep, I didn't have it. Okay. <laughs> this means this constrictor is going to live. Yeah, yeah. Seems cool. All right, well, yeah, I, I think it really did come down to I kept a Castle Castle Fable Passage hand, but, like, the hand was good outside of that. And if I could uh, thoughts he's on one for that Grackma, that's the card I needed to get rid of. That card is a pain, so. Yeah, if you, if you left me with the Ooze instead. I mean, the, the yeah. Ooze would have been a 3-3, three, three, but then you... Yeah. you um, yeah, it, it, you would have had a lot more outs. Yeah. I know that you didn't draw the removal spell for it, but you, yeah. you would have been able to instead of drawing a removal spell for Grackbond, leaving me with another 5-5. Five five. Totally agree. All right, everyone, that does it for our first two games. We split them. We are going to head to sideboarding and see what we got for these two matchups. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody, welcome back to sideboarding here on Versus Live between Rakdos Midrange and Golgari Scales. Um, from my side, we're taking out the Scroungers. I really just want all my cards to either kill your creatures or be able to block. Yeah, so typically not a good card against green creature decks. Exactly, but, you know, if I'm playing against other control decks and stuff, this style of card uh, is going to be quite good, at least in theory. Maybe it's just not a good enough card in Historic now. Uh, only time will tell. Taking out one Thoughtseize as well, just for every removal spell I had in the sideboard some other cards i could have had that would have been pretty good um as good upgrades to this deck anger the gods noxious grasp um but didn't include those so we're just uh, sticking with this i decided as my wrath effect to be more focused on goblins because i expect that a little bit more but then again i guess anger just does the same thing so <laughs> so maybe that was just better but yeah. yeah on my side bringing in some additional interaction in the form of gem razor there's plenty of targets and this also gets my creatures out of a uh, range of the red removal that's in Corey's deck yep can also make a big reach creature to contain a glory bringer mm -hmm. uh, so some a lot of good uh, aspects of gemmers are here a couple more removal spells heartless act particularly good against glory bringer that's a card i'm very focused on okay. in case you hadn't noticed <laughs> uh, and then the ozolith and the two copies of vivian monsters advocate can let me play a longer game more effectively both really good at grinding cutting some of our weaker cards in the matchup swarm shambler is just the worst card in the deck should probably be stone coil serpent sure um and then thought is a point of interaction that is a bad top deck later in the game can be even Rishkar, did you play any of those? No, I think Orin Refuse is better than Rishkar. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, was was sort of my it. my reasoning there. Not, sure. Not legendary. I think the upside is a lot higher. You sure. don't really need the mana. My curve's a little bit lower. Sure. Um, and then, uh, so the... Uh, the thought is there. They can be a liability if I'm on the back foot. Mm -hmm. They can be a liability drawn late in the game. So I'd just rather have these kinds of interaction. Not 100% sold on the way I'm sideboarding. This is sideboarding pretty heavy, but I like these cards quite a bit. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, and thought is a card I think I would want to take out as well if I had a little bit more uh, interaction in the sideboard. But they're still fine. I do want to hit your Planeswalkers. It, breaking up your draws is even completely fine as well. So, All right, Dan, you got any questions for us? 
I do. What so, do you got? Uh, first off, from Ninja of Terror 10. Nice. Um, <laughs> thoughts on Torrential Gear Hulk coming into the metagame? Ooh. Torrential Gear Hulk. Goal, Torrential Gear Hulk. That was easy for me to say. Seems like a card that won't be coming back in full force like it was in standard because of one mystical counter spell that has been uh, basically running ever. Mystical Dispute seems so good against it, and it just seems slow in general, like against goblins and stuff, so it doesn't seem what, like that's going to make a what, big impact. What are your big targets for it, too? It's not like Pioneer yeah. where you have Dig Through Time, yeah. you know, maybe Sublime Epiphany, but then you have two six drops in your deck. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean, it could just be blue-red or blue-black control. Have a top end of a couple of those, I could see that, but I don't think it'll be defining in any yeah. way, but... Agreed. But still going to be a solid card that, you know, up against non-blue decks, I think it's still probably going to be just quite powerful, so... Yeah, I think it's a card yeah. that'll see spot, spotty play. Yep. But not a staple like it was in standard. Totally agree. All right, I'll be going first, and I would love to see a Chandra this time around. I haven't seen that beautiful card. I would love to see a Winding Constrictor. Yeah. Well, um, this hand is a little rough in some regards here, but I think with just the curve being powerful enough, I'm going to try it. I will keep mine. All right, pass to you. And we'll start on Blooming Marsh, Pell Collector. Okay. Pass the turn. Hmm, interesting. I uh, don't think I really want to cast that, so I'm going to go with Heart of Kiron. Pass to you. Uh, forest Winding Constrictor. Oh, baby. Two You're counters doing it. on Pelt Collector. You're doing it. Attack for three. All right. My prayer is 17. <laughs> you are at 17. All right. I will go with Pia Kiran Nalar. Yep. Or were you getting aggressive or playing defense? That's the real question. I don't know. I think I probably have to hold him home, but you uh, will probably be pretty good at going over the top of me, but five damage seems like too much, so I'm going to pass. Uh, I will take two. Okay. And which one am I mutating this gem raiser oh, on to? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> God. I'm at 18. Obviously, my damage output is higher going on the Pelt Collector. Yeah. Um, the Winding Constrictor is also, like, more of a target. So I do think I just want to go on the Pelt Collector. Okay. Uh, I will destroy Heart of Kieran. All right. And I will attack for six. I'll take it. Brutal. Brings 11. You to 11, pass the turn. Well, I kept a hand with Pia and Heart of Kieran, and uh, that didn't work out great, but luckily I did just draw a nice one here, and we'll kick her that. And uh, I will just say go. Um... Ooze. Okay. Put a counter on the constrictor. Sure. Two counters. Get in for four. I will take it. Seven. Three to seven. Pass the turn. Boo. That will get the constrictor out of glory bringer range. Yep. Um. <clears throat> gonna fetch a land here. Get a mountain. Really bad turn for me. I am just going to Thought Seize you. A card I wish was a dip of removal spell, of course, but... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's going to oh bring you to five. God. <laughs> um, hmm. I have to take a Heartless Act, I guess. So, yeah, we'll do that and pass to you. Yeah, I think maybe the Heart of Kieran plan, thinking that that was going to be good enough, was probably just completely wrong. Top of the deck wasn't super nice to us, but we did keep a land heavy hand, so ought to be expected. So let's Heartless Act the Pia. I will pump once, and I'll pump twice. And play Winding Constrictor. Yep. Attack. Put three counters here. Yep. Have to block that. You take two, go to three. Yep. Pass the turn. Dead. Oh, you drew a blood juice, sir. Yeah, I know. That's so good. <laughs> no, and honestly, the Heartless, or the Heart of Kieran put me in a weird spot where I wanted to play that into Pia, but I drew Thoughtseize on two, and Thoughtseizing away your Constrictor would have been better in hindsight. But, you know, if Heart of Kieran lives and I can get aggressive, 
Yeah, I, I think my mentality was just flawed on that keep in, in general, but yeah. Yeah, he tried to get aggressive on the on the on the play. So you're on the play. Yeah. yeah, but your deck is just much more aggressive. You yeah, know, you just put five power on turn two, and it's like, okay, all right, that's going to be rough. A very, very strong curve there. Gem Razor looked awesome. I'm still looking for my Glory Bringers and Chandras. Are they in here? Yes, I believe they are, but. All right, that, game, game number four. Yeah. I'm up you're up 2 1. Yep. Okay. Back against the wall. All what right, Dan, do you got a question for us at all? I do. What do you got? So from uh, Sergeant Swagger 33, okay. uh, Corey, yeah. was there any consideration for at least a copy of Extinction Event, like uh, current versions of sta standard uh, Rakdos? Yeah, and I mean, uh, that's another card when it just comes down to like what you expect to play in the metagame. And since we don't really have a metagame, it's hard to want to play that. I just wanted to play good, proactive stuff. All my removal is just going to be... You you know, good against planeswalkers, good against creatures, but you know, one of those that that could have been reasonable. I I wouldn't see any problem with it. Yeah, but it's not something I would gravitate to towards yeah. in a vacuum. And I do just play uh, I do play a lot of creatures too. If I was more controlling like Sultai, where you just play like Uro, you just play odds basically, then it's yeah. it's better. But I think I would like Anger more personally because historic has a lot of tiny creatures but of course it would have been good there that's for sure got a I don't of paper. actually Are we out of paper Damn, that we need some paper we need paper or, or he's been wasting too much paper no that's not true I'm that's over here. True. I've been using the same one sheet of paper for like 2 weeks now well maybe you should have been using it a little bit longer um, if anything, they're uh, up at the front yeah, if you need to grab some. And we got a notepad here if you need. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. That'll be fine. Yeah, maybe we might need a couple of those. Oh, Sweet. <laughs> okay, we got it. We're, we're flying solo. We got this. Let's... We're doing a live. All right. <laughs> I will... Magical live television, everyone. All right, I will go first here. And uh, yeah, this sounds quite good. I will keep as well. Okay. Um. Let's go with... I think I almost want to... I have the, the ideal mana base of Triple Blooming Marsh. <laughs> go. Love it, love it. Um, Odds that I draw the fourth one. <laughs> I am going to take three. That's a lot. Yep, and boom at ya. So I take one, that's less than three. I know, here go. 17, 19. Yep. Uh, I will play a Pelt Collector. Okay. Pass the turn. All right, not a great draw there. Um, let's go with a Blood Chief's Thirst. And let's get a tap land, trigger this, and pass 18. to you. Awkward. Awkward. Uh, another Marsh, and I will play the Ozolith. Okay. Pass the turn. Own tap. A draw. All right, my draws have been absolutely awkward as well. I will attack for one, trigger. 17 all. Okay. And I will play a Heart of Kiran and pass to you. Another Blooming Marsh and a Grackma. Grackma. Three counters, pass the turn. Okay. Um, I suppose I want to crack this. Probably for a, a mountain. A mountain. Mount on, mount off. All right. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. All right. Draw. Oh, baby. Now. All right. It's a dice uh, trigger. Yeah, dice trigger. And then this gets three counters, yeah, right? E even when, it, when anything leaves the battlefield. Yeah, so that is uh, quite good. That is quite good. But. So 17 17, right? Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. You didn't miss too much. All right, but I do have a Chandra. Hooray, we did it. Um, now, so what do we want to do here? I could negative to kill Grackma. You get a 3-3. Three, three. You get tokens onto the Ozilus. It becomes a gigantic creature, so that doesn't seem great, admittedly. Um, but I do want a crew with this, and I'll attack you for four. I'll go to 13. Okay, and then I, I'm just going to take up top ability, deal you two. I'll go to 11. Your go. 
Okay, Jim Razor continues to look awesome. Yeah, Let's, that's... Uh, uh... Mutate and destroy the heart of Kieran. Okay. Actually, do I want to destroy the heart of the bone mat? Probably, because I'm going to be able to... I guess this is going to be a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, so the heart actually protects the Chandra, so definitely want to deal with the heart. That's messed up. Um, wow. But it doesn't mean the bone mat's going to draw quite a few cards. Yeah, yeah. Gross, though. Gem Razor has just been insane. Okay. Attack Chandra. All right, it's dead. Fortunately for you, Grackmaw says I get a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of counters on it, not equal to its power. Okay, so I will okay. not get a 7-7 seven, seven when this dies. Sure, sure. We'll play a Woodland Cemetery and pass. Okay. Um, gross. Gross, gross, gross. Yeah, I know. When I, I had that like light bulb moment in my head when I was mm -hmm. putting together the sideboard for this deck, I was like, Gem Razor seems awesome, right? Yeah. And I it has right. been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just the perfect disenchant effect for this deck. It's proactive, it's yeah. aggressive, it synergizes so well with almost all of your creatures. Yeah, but I hate it. Um, so now what on earth can I possibly do? Everything lines up so awkwardly against this. Well, we do have a corner that you can cry in. Yeah, I do need to do that. Grackma is just honestly the big problem. This is a card that I think has been, you know, it doesn't have a home right now in standard. There's so much exile effects in standard. Yeah, so yeah. it's easy to overlook a card like that and say, well, it's just not playable because it hasn't seen play. Yep. But it is just a powerful card when you read it, and in the right shell, it's going to shine. That is true. Um, now, there are plenty of decks in Historic that will go over the top of a card like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but in matchups like this that are interactive, where you're just trying to play creatures and removal spells, Rackmall plays really well. It is quite good there, that's for sure. All right, let's go with I'll attack, trigger. I'll go to 10. Okay. And second main, I'll play Chandra number two, tick up for mana, and play Heart of Kieran number two. Pass to you. Uh, that's really good. Not bad, not bad. So my 7-7 seven, seven Gem Razor is either going to deal with Chandra or Heart. Mm -hmm. So... Play an Agadim tapped. Okay. And I'm just gonna swift end the Chandra. I'll remove four or remove it five times to fizzle your spell. Sure, sure. Uh, I just want to be able to leave back the blocker so I don't uh, deny you a card from the bow mat. Okay. Um and then I'll pass the turn. And this ends up in the graveyard too, right? Yeah, it does. It fizzles, okay. yep. Um, okay, so I think I have one real play here, and it's not insane or anything, but I will Blood Chief's Thirst with Kicker. So that puts three counters on the Ozolith and leaves me with a 3-3 three, three Hydra. Yep, and then I'll attack, trigger. I will block a Bowmat Courier. I will sacrifice. That's pretty good. And get a new hand, and I already played a land, so I'll pass to you. Yeah, not bad. Maybe I should have attacked the Chandra and dealt with the Heart of Kieran, but... Yeah, who knows? Who knows? That continues to be awkward. So you're at 17 and I'm at 10? Yep. Okay, <clears throat> well, six. Gonna move the counters here. And it's non token, right? Or does that work mm. too? Like if I keep killing it. It's whenever a creature I control leaves the battlefield. Any so creature. This is a 3 3, though, with three counters on it, then, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, because Crackmon just creates oh, a 3-3, yeah, yeah. so... So let's... Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird to yeah, represent yeah. there, but yeah. Agree. So it'll get three counters when it dies Kay. on the yep. Uh But I will attack for six. Okay. I'll start applying pressure. I'm down to 11. So we got 11 to 10, and now I've got... Um, yeah, I'm going to play Woodland Cemetery, play Scavenging Ooze, Kay. and exile your Bomat Courier and my Pelt Collector. Okay. Uh, just get it out of a three damage range, so I'll go to 12. Okay. And then I'll pass the turn. So 11 to 12. All right, I have a sweet turn. I guess I should I should just do all three. I'm, I'm not okay. doing anything. I'll, I'll exile the Grackmaw, too. Okay. So I'm at 13. 
Right. I have a pretty sweet yeah. turn. They're out of. They're both out of Glorybringer range. Yeah. So, no. what, how sweet is this turn? All right. So I'll start with Croxa. Trigger on the stack crew. It's pretty good. I have an ordinary fuse. Dang it. Uh, I will sack this. Are we just casting Croxa again? Yep. And if Corey, you know, Corey could have sacked the Fable Passage first, so I'm not yep. getting punished for tapping out for the use. Here. Exactly, yep. You could have ate all my stuff, and I think it still would have been short, but yeah. Yeah, so we'll do I this. exiled two of my things, and you're going to be left with two cards. So. Yep. Nothing so, I could have done here. Exile these five. Should have been on my radar, but yeah. So, so I'll go to 10. Or you go to 9, right? You're at 12? I, I went up to 13. I oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. So you go to 10, and then I'll attack for 4. I go to 6. Okay, and then I'll pass to you. Yeah, that is pretty good. You are going to have to block something here. Yep. And that was an incredible draw. Oh, God. Well, she serves the Croxa. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's exactly uh, what I wanted. You're so lucky! So now he's got a crew, and he's got yeah, a chump block. <laughs> Attack. Block that. Block the ooze. Take six. Right, I do just have to block. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, the, the, it's lethal just on board, yep. even before I start exiling other things. God, you're lucky. Exile your Croxa. Okay. I'll go to seven. Yep. And pass the turn. You're so lucky! You were so dead! I mean, the ooze was going to be really big regardless, so I, like, both of these were going to trade for the Croxa. <laughs> Right, or I guess you you, blow, you chump and, and live, but yeah, I, I chump with the heart and then I can attack with Croxa, and this Glorybringer might have crossed the finish line. Uh, so I was at six. Yeah, I guess like I, I was gonna go to nine. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah, Glorybringer probably would have done it, depending upon what else I drew. Like a, a Grackma would have been good. Yeah, and I am at five. Yeah, you're at five, and I have two lethal creatures. Oh, uh, I can deal with one. But that's not going to be enough here, it looks like. Um, hmm. So very close, but so very far away. Yep, you got it. You got it. That was yeah, close. Yeah, Brady Magma Spray just don't match up well against the, the biggins. Exactly, yep. No, nope, I uh, I would have liked that one of Extinction event, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Whoever suggested that. Uh, even. We need to get you in on deck building next time, because yeah. that would have been awesome. <laughs> I would have exiled these three, gone to seven counters here, added yeah. ten counters to the and just yeah. been like, any creature, please. Any creature, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Land War Elves, 11, 11. Bang, yeah. Yeah, and honestly, Ozolith looked awesome there um just lined up super well but it was once again gem razor got me so good yeah, i had gem a razor great draw i had a great draw was, you know bowmat looked great too these, but these two cards that looked really awesome this matchup yep that was really cool that was really cool i'm no. i'm angry at you but that was cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> fun to see some more recent cards get added to this shell and really perform well yeah so you see the ways that the historic card pool can really upgrade what you remember from the, the kaladesh standard era yep exactly and I think that saves our best for last, I must say. At least the deck that we all kind of consider the deck that would come out uh, to fight the most. And that's Teamer Energy. I had to build a Teamer Energy deck for Nostalgia. So that's what I'm going to be playing next round. What are you going to be playing and against me? I'm going to be playing the deck that went up against a lot of Teamer Energy style decks in Mardu Vehicles. So yes, yes. This is, a, <laughs> this is a grudge match from three years ago, four years ago or so. I like it. It's been, uh, it's been years in the making, that's for sure. So, all right, we're going to take a short five-minute break and we'll be right back with round number three for the marbles here on Versus Live. 